NASA's iconic Hubble Space Telescope is on the brink of death. The urgent task for NASA now is to find a way to rescue it, and SpaceX is a perfect choice for this. However, NASA did not accept this fact. They have rejected SpaceX. Why? Does NASA have a better solution? Or is this just a case of more favoritism coming from this agency? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Hubble launched aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery on April 24, 1990, and has been capturing stunning views of the cosmos since astronauts fixed a flaw in the telescope's mirror during a 1993 servicing mission. The famous telescope has contributed to a number of revolutionary discoveries, including confirming that the universe's expansion is accelerating rather than slowing down, and finding that supermassive black holes lurk at the heart of most, if not all, galaxies. After 34 years of orbiting Earth, NASA's iconic Hubble Space Telescope is aging. The problems it's facing are increasing, and the latest issue involves Hubble's gyroscopes, which help point the telescope in the right direction. One of them has been glitching repeatedly. The latest incident happened on May 24th. The telescope automatically entered safe mode, and one of the three gyroscopes gave faulty telemetry readings, said NASA. Hubble's current predicament follows long-term problems with its gyroscopes, which it also experienced in November and more recently in April. The Hubble team got the telescope back to work April 29th, but the fix did not last long. The troublesome nature of the malfunction has forced NASA to implement a new recovery plan to keep the observatory operating well into the 2030s. So, what is NASA's solution to save Hubble? Before we delve into NASA's official solution, let's review the rare opportunities to save Hubble that NASA's rejected. The quest to extend the life of the venerable Hubble Space Telescope has taken an intriguing turn, courtesy of a bold proposal from Jarek Isaacman, the billionaire commander of the Polaris Dawn mission. In 2022, Isaacman floated the idea of partnering with SpaceX to provide a free boost and potential servicing of Hubble, leveraging the company's Dragon spacecraft and the forthcoming Polaris Dawn commercial spacewalk. However, this ambitious plan faced opposition from NASA officials due to concerns about the Polaris crew's inexperience with spacewalks. Dragon doesn't have a robotic arm to grab Hubble. Shuttle missions around Hubble lasted a week, giving astronauts time to tinker with the hardware. But Dragon does not have that capability. To be honest, these difficulties are understandable. However, another idea has emerged with much more potential. Not Dragon, but Starship, a developing launch vehicle that could be redesigned to suit sophisticated space missions, while also allowing more time for the comprehensive development of the EVA suits. One intriguing proposal revolves around equipping SpaceX's mighty Starship with a version of the legendary Canadarm robotic arm, which plays a pivotal role in previous Hubble servicing missions. The Canadarm, a series of Canadian robotic arms utilized on the space shuttle orbiters, was instrumental in deploying, maneuvering, and capturing payloads, including the careful retrieval and mounting of the Hubble telescope. While such a robotic mission might incur costs for taxpayers depending on NASA's desires, proponents argue that it would be significantly more cost-effective than the previous shuttle missions, thanks to Starship's low launch costs. With its massive volume and payload capacity, integrating a robotic arm and other necessary fittings from the space shuttles could be feasible for Starship. However, some analysts caution that retrofitting a Canadarm to Starship could be a substantial undertaking depending on the specific variant chosen. The Canadarm's length necessitates a large cargo bay door for deployment, potentially favoring the cargo variant of Starship. Additionally, replicating the intricate control systems and interfaces from the shuttle orbiter could prove challenging, leading to debates over whether to refurbish existing Canadarms or just commission an entirely new design. As the debate continues, one thing is clear. The ingenuity and ambition of the space industry are once again pushing the boundaries of what's possible, paving the way for new frontiers in space exploration and maintenance. The prospect of combining the vast capabilities of Starship with the advanced robotics of Canadarm presents an attractive solution, promising to minimize risks for astronauts on dangerous missions while significantly reducing costs. Hubble might not only survive until 2030, but could last for several more decades. But sadly, NASA has completely rejected this lucrative potential. 
Our position right now is that after exploring the current commercial capabilities, we are not going to pursue a reboost right now, Mark Clampin, director of NASA's Astrophysics Division, said. Asked about the study, which NASA has declined to release for proprietary reasons, Clampin said it was a feasibility study to help us understand some of the issues and challenges that we might have to face, he said. There were options such as the possibility of doing enhancements by adding gyros to the outside of the telescope, but they were really just notional concepts. NASA has evidently decided it is safer to let Hubble age out on its own than take a chance on private hands touching the hallowed telescope. Announced with certainty, NASA will soon reduce Hubble's operation so that it can function only on one gyroscope. The gyroscopes move the telescope from target to target and then lock on with rock-solid stability for detailed observations. Therefore, they are crucial to Hubble's longevity and its ability to operate. The telescope was launched with six ultra-stable gyroscopes, but only three at a time are needed for normal operation. During the final servicing mission in 2009, all six were replaced. Three of the new units included components susceptible to a form of corrosion, while the other three featured an improved design and greatly reduced or eliminated that risk. However, in any case, by the time Hubble's 30th anniversary rolled around in 2020, all three of the six older model gyroscopes had failed. One of the remaining three units, gyroscope number three, began acting erratically earlier, and its performance progressively worsened. Knowing gyroscope failures were inevitable, engineers earlier developed software that would allow Hubble to operate with just two gyroscopes or even one. But the downside was that the telescope could only reach targets in about half the sky at any given time instead of 85% or more with all three gyroscopes. Even though the telescope could be operated more efficiently with two gyroscopes, engineers concluded it would make more sense to put one of the two remaining healthy units in standby mode and to operate Hubble with just one gyroscope, holding the other in reserve for use as needed. Our team first developed a plan for one gyro operations over 20 years ago, and it's the best mode to go forward to prolong Hubble's life, Krauss said. There's some limitations. It'll take us more time to move from one target attitude to the next and to be able to lock on that science target. That'll lead to lower efficiency in scheduling science observations. We currently schedule about 85 orbits a week, and we expect to be able to schedule about 74 hours a week, so about 12% reduction in scheduling efficiency. In addition, because the telescope's movement in single gyroscope mode is less precise and more subject to error, we won't have quite as much flexibility as to where we can observe in the sky at any one time. But over the course of a year, we'll have full sky available to us. One other limitation, the telescope will not be able to lock onto and track targets closer than the orbit of Mars, though such observations were rare even in the three gyroscope mode. In the meantime, engineers plan to implement the one gyroscope control mode in the coming days and to return Hubble to science operations around the middle of the month. We updated reliability assessments for the gyros, and we still come to the conclusion that we have greater than a 70% probability of operating at least one gyro through 2035, Krauss said. Besides the limitations of using the gyroscope, NASA is also facing another disadvantage that reduces Hubble's lifespan. That's something called orbital decay. Anything that orbits Earth does so in ever-decreasing circles, inevitably falling back to Earth at some point in the future. Hubble is in low Earth orbit, about 326 miles, 525 kilometers above Earth's surface. That's farther out than the International Space Station, which has to boost itself every month to a higher orbit to avoid burning up in the atmosphere. Hubble's orbit is decaying several miles each year, and if it degrades badly, it will unavoidably burn up, ultimately being guided to break up over the Pacific Ocean to fall into the spacecraft cemetery. The telescope operators do not forecast that Hubble will re-enter Earth's atmosphere before the mid-2030s. That, combined with the gyroscope limit, would seem to set a firm boundary on Hubble's maximum lifetime remaining. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.